How do you do that? Tim Allen is the head of the dig, in other words, the chief archaeologist here. Now, when you actually started work on this site, well, first of all, why did you start? Did you know there was something here? Yes, we did. We could see this particular site from the air as you fly over. Uh, because the ditches are deeper and the, the pits that people dug, the soil's deeper, the crops grow more slowly, they ripen later. If you fly at the right time of year, you can actually see the green of the, of the features in the yellow of the rest of the crop, and you can plan it almost from the air. And also, if you, uh, if, 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 if you walk across the field, you can see it because it's higher. You want to go in the air and have a look? <laughs> well, we're not doing that today. We're getting into it. We're digging down and seeing what's in there. Talking of which, if you knew there was something here, what you've found, is it better than you expected? Much better, much better. Because when you, when, when you see it, all you see is a little bit of the picture. When you take the, the plough saws off, there's always a lot more there. And, and in this case, there's been a, ma a great deal more than we expected to find. What like? Well, it's all very well up here on the gravel where you can see it. But down there in the wet, you can't see anything from the air at all. And we've got an old channel of the River Thames. And in that, there are a whole host of wooden structures, you know, pile-driven bridges. And those we couldn't anticipate at all until we dug some holes. And on the floodplain, the, the low-lying area that gets flooded in the winter, there we found sites that were used, what, uh, several thousand years ago, that have been covered over by floods and left completely undisturbed. And that's pretty unusual, in fact. Now, he's having a look at the soil, and that, that is actually how you decide where to dig, isn't it? By looking at the soil. He thinks it's there, but it's the different colours in the soil. Isn't That's it? right. When you, when you strip any site of, of, the, of the overlying plough soils, you end up with a mosaic of different colours. And there's the colour of the natural soil, which here is either gravel or a sort of orangey-brown, and through it run the in infilled ditches and pits, and they show it normally as, as black or dark brown. And so you plan those marks, in effect, and that gives you the outline of the features that people dug in the past. Now, eventually, this is going to be a rowing lake for Eton College. Because it's Eton, is that why it's, a, it's such an educational project? It's certainly why we've done it this way. We're digging in a series of summers, which is lovely for the weather, but, but also because it's so close to the River Thames, we couldn't dig in the winter. You'd be, you'd be up to your neck in water. But it's why we have volunteers. We have an, only about 20 professional archaeologists, and the other 80 who are here are, are all school leavers or university students doing archaeology, or just local amateurs who want to come along and get involved. All right, great. Us, yes, we're going to get involved. Let's get into it. So that's the kind of getting stuck in that you had in mind, is it? Well, actually, they do use heavy plants. They have to, to get the top layer off before they can get down to the fine stuff. In fact, if you look over here, you can probably see that there's a bit of a drop there, and that's where they're scraping back slowly, just a few inches at a time, with an archaeologist standing by every bucketful to say, yes, continue, or no, stop, there may be something interesting there. Talking of interesting things, over here, the old course of the River Thames. You can see where it's black there at the bottom, and inside it, come on, come on, a tree, which is probably fallen down all of its own from the banks and settled at the bottom, preserved by the mud. Again, this is where it's down to fine arts, just chipping away, maybe with a little brush or with a little scraper, not disturbing too much. Do you know that further up the river, because they're following its course and looking at its banks, further up the river, they found a beaver's lodge. And not only that, but it had a beaver inside it. No, it wasn't still alive. It was thousands of years old, and I think it's fair to say it had fallen off its perch. It was a deceased beaver. Right, over here, this is interesting, because there's a couple of pieces of wood here. They've got to pump the water out. Well, you see, I know it's, well, it's only a bit that's coming out. They've got a piece of wood here, which may well be a worked piece of wood. In other words, put there by man. Chopped and then put there by man. It's that one just running down there, right? Now that, if it is a worked piece of wood, is very, very old. And then they have to try and work out what it was doing. How old? Well, 6,000 years old, actually. Perfectly preserved. You're right, exactly. Vindolanda on Hadrian's Wall, everything there was preserved because of things pressing down on top. And we saw 
those lovely shoes and those coins. Just some of the thousands of pairs of shoes that have been found on this site, and in particular, this one, which belonged to the boss's wife, Lepidina, a beautiful shoe. That's, that's Hadrian. That's the boss, yes. Small yeah. chain. Small, don't get too excited. Yeah, there's his predecessor, Trajan. His, uh, well, he called him his uncle. One, wonderful coins, and this is it. No, no problems with them at all. No deterioration. Fantastic! All those perfectly preserved bits at Vindolanda. You're, uh, you're on the wrong side. Come over here and make it quick. You didn't have to go that fast. Steady. Now look, here, the old bank of the river. Can you see it going down there? And the water would have lapped up to there, right? You can see where the river bed was. Actually, it may even have gone a lot deeper than that. Now, because the river moved over the years, the banks moved as well. And roughly speaking, where these white signs are shows where the different banks have been for this river. Now. Because the river's moved, and because they're plotting its course, they know that there was an island within it. And over there, they found some very, very old worked piece of woods driven into the ground in lines across the riverbed. So, what would they have been? What would... Today would be good. Just have a guess. It's going over a river. It's made out of a bridge. Yes, absolutely. Now, if there was a bridge onto this island here, as it would have been, there must have been something on the island. Otherwise, no point in the bridge. There was a settlement. Come with me into it. Excuse us. Thank you very much. Now, all the way around the settlement, there was a ditch. In fact, several ditches. And that's what they're working on here at the moment uncovering those ditches, probably to keep animals in. But because this was a flat land that flooded, those ditches would silt up every now and then, so they'd have to build another one. And in fact, you can see the different ditches here, in lines. These actually, although there are only sections of them, went in great big circles right the way round the settlement. Very, very hard work, because all you're going on is a slight change in colour of the soil to know what was the edge of the ditch and what was filled into the ditch. You're right, Offers Dyke. That was a fairly serious ditch, wasn't it? And you, yes, you took me there when it was full of snow. And this is it, Offers Dyke, built by King Offer in the 8th century. And this is actually the dyke, the hill bit is the dike, and the ditch is down here. See if it's deep. No, not, not very deep. This is the tough side of archaeology. Although when you think about it, the pick he's using hasn't changed much over thousands of years. And there you are, you see, proof that they kept animals this side of the ditches. If it was a cat, it was a very big cat. I think you might find it was a cow. You'd probably think it was Kitty's grandma or something. Anyway, once upon a time, I would have been under a huge mound of earth. Correct, yes. A mound like that with a moat around it. Because this mound dealt with something. It dealt with something that happens to every single one of us. It dealt with cleaning your teeth. No, it didn't. It dealt with death. Now look, archaeologists can't really date things very well from, like, wood that they find in the river because, you know, it, well, actually what they have found here is that a lot of the wood that was used was forced, grown in coppices so that they could rebuild bridges. And because it's forced, it doesn't give you a very accurate time date, right? But with burials, it's a different matter. So when they dug into here, they knew that in the middle there would be some bodies, but there weren't. Probably been ploughed away over the years, farmers ploughing it. However, because this was once a magical site with religious importance, people wanted to be buried near it. 
and they did find something in one of the satellite graves. Peter is a volunteer archaeologist who specialises in the human body, and this is a human body, or the remains of one anyway. From what sort of period, Peter? We think this is a Bronze Age period, because the body has been buried in the ground in a very tightly flexed position. Sort of fetal position. It's almost a fetal position, yeah, yeah. precisely. Yes. Um, I've already removed the upper, which was the right leg, and here are the bones of the left leg tightly flexed, hip here, knee there, ankle there. It's not in very good nick, is it? It is in poor condition. <laughs> it has been damaged over the, shall we say, millennia by ploughing and by machine pressure. So the bones are distorted, they're crushed. As you can see, the pelvic bones are really in fragments. And so the skull was shattered as it was found. So tractors and things like that, horses' hooves going over it, made Great a right old mess. Yes. But you're going to do your best with it. That's right. I shall be able to, well, confirm that A, it's human, <laughs> B, that it's an adult, and possibly that's all I'll be able to oh, assess. Really? If, I, if they were in better condition, one can assess sex, right. and if it's even better condition, you can say how tall they were by measuring the long bones. All these long bones are broken, their ends are missing, right. and so all one could be able to say is this is an adult, a grown person. All right, well, we'll see you a little later with one which is in a slightly better condition. <laughs> I hardly think that this is appropriate. I mean, we've finished all the messy stuff. We're at the farm now, which is away from the site, and this is where they coordinate everything. They log it all, identify it, protect it. I've finished with all the messy stuff. And besides, apart from them being too short, it's not coordinated, is it? Let's go and see some bones. Catch up with Peter again. Those were the wrong trousers. But these are the right bones. Peter's here again. When I say the right bones, these are in much better shape, aren't they? They're in better shape than the ones we saw before. And what do you know about them? Well, because we have a complete jawbone with a complete set of teeth, we can say the wisdom teeth are out, so this person is 18 or, or over. There's very little wear on these teeth, so I would say under 25. So that gives us an age range of 18 to 25. Right. Now, if the bones, if there were more complete parts of the pelvis or the skull, one would be able to make an accurate sex test to estimation, male or female. Yeah. With this bit of pelvis, it's not possible to be absolutely certain, but it favours a male shape. It's a narrow notch. So it's a male between 18 and, and 25. 25. And height? Do we, can we can do that height, with the bones? We measure that by measuring long bones if we've got them. And we've got two upper arm bones and a thigh bone. If we measure on a measuring board, and it works out at 420 millimetres, 42 centimetres, and that corresponds to a height of 5 foot 3 inches. 5 foot 3. Isn't that fantastic? Investigation on something that's, what, how old? Thousands? How old? Well, maybe difficult to say, but we're calling it Iron Age, something between 800 BC and the time the Romans came. Now, what do bones end up in? Let me tell you. Tombs! <laughs> 1755. Now, that was the year that the whole of this area was shaken by a huge earthquake and everything came crashing down and stop it. You're always doing that. This is a megalithic burial chamber that is 2000 years BC. Don't be stupid. You know very well they don't get earthquakes like that in South Books, do they? Hey, eh? So, from the Tumulus de Alcala in the Algarve to the campsite where all the workers here camp out, they live it, they breathe it, they feel it. I could do that. I could lead them, actually. I could be a leader of men. I could tell them where to dig. I could tell them what to look for. I could tell them how valuable it is. I could put everything in the timeline that is life. Yeah. 
You sort that out, get me a job. All right? In the meantime, let's go back to when we were in Cyprus. On the side of that hill, little round houses, 5,800 BC. Kirakitia. Show us that bit. What are you doing? You're going for a lie down in your caravan. Your caravan? Halfway between Larnaca and Limassol is this Neolithic site, Kirakitia. And judging by those steps and the steepness of the hill, they were pretty fit people. Round houses going right the way up the side of the hill, built out of either mudstones or rocks that they gathered. 5,800 years before Christ. I'm serious. If he's got a caravan, I want a motorhome. And I want it air-conditioned, and I want a fridge, and I want the fridge fully stocked. And you know what I like, so just stick... Just, just a minute, hold on. What? You've sorted me a job. Great. And a tent. Well, I suppose it's a, it's a start. I'm glad you came here, though, because this is fascinating. They are sifting through the soil from the site here and finding out what might be left in it. Drying out the remains. Look, a little tooth of some sort here. Well, probably an animal, I think. Anyway, looking for all sorts of clues. In fact, Liz down here is doing it all. And little animal bones. Might be snail shells, because if you find out what kind of snails you know they were eating, you knew what grew there. Is that right? Right. That's right, okay, fine. Some tools down here, like that, for picking away. And some hand axes, chipping away, made out of flint. And look at this. Oh yes, I know, beautiful little fine arrowheads made out of flint. Look at how delicate that is. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, talking of small things, can you see that? They think that those might be rib bones from a tiny little baby that was born prematurely and probably the mother died during childbirth because they found the mother's skeleton and then that. Ah, oh, sad. And then some of the oldest pottery that you'll find in Britain and up towards the Roman period. And talking of the Roman period, remember when we were uh, in Tunisia, about halfway down on top of a hill, which is unusual in itself, the city of Duga, yeah? Just look at the size of this settlement. It's absolutely in... Well, I'm just, I'm just doing a pose, you know. It is not Bruce Forsyth. Nice to see you, to see you. Nice. I can't do Brucey, but it is nice to see this. Look at it. It's enormous. Duga. Perfect in every way, but only because someone preserved it, protected it, looked after it, and they're still doing now. Hey, step into my milking parlour. Exactly the same as they're doing here. Look, stakes that they've taken out of the old riverbed, and they're preserving for the moment in some fresh water, just keeping them here, and then they'll try and work out what they were for exactly, and who knows, maybe even in the future there'll be some other way of finding out even more about what they did. You want to choose another clip? Go on then, where do you want to go? Finland! Why Finland? Where about the war bunker? Okay, history's history when all said and done. And a nation that forgets its past repeats it. Now, round here, you'll see the living accommodation. Watch your head, it's very low. There's uh, wood there, because it's still being used today. 26 men, it's very dark in here, 26 men would have slept in here. Their own stove, their own well, absolutely everything, totally self-sufficient. So, this is the job that you've sorted out for me to do in environmental processing. Well, I'll, I'll grant you it's very important, because you've... You've got to take all the soil samples and find out what's in them. Marty's doing it just now, and this is a batch that's going in. What? What? It's just another batch of soil, is it, Marty? Yes. Um, first of all, it's gone through the machine and gotten most of the silt out. 
and the plot off the top, which is in that bucket, which is one of the most important things that we go for. Yeah. There's and a bone in it. Yes, there is a bone in it. Oh, look. Normally, we don't have anything that big, and that's really not a plant. That actually came out of this soil sample. Most of the time, those are found on site. This one happened to sneak through. So... It's a mess. <laughs> it is a mess. So you put it through the different meshes. Yes. This is bigger than 10. Right. This is 10 to 4. And this is 4 to 0.5, yeah, underneath yes. it. Yes. And you're finding what, look, like seeds? Um, the seeds actually come out in that one, in the plot, which is floated off. Um, the only thing we're going through this for is that we don't miss things like this, because we know exactly where the soil came from, so we know where this bone came from. Right. So it can also be plotted, you know, in the, in the overall plan. But okay. we hose this down, and it gets hard. I see it going through, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> listen, you know those, those orange things do great, those? Yeah. You haven't still... Shame. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just get wet then. Oh, it's cool though. It is cool, that's nice. Sometimes we find flakes. Oh, yeah, lovely. And it's so